Hello there guys and welcome to Sunday's live stream here at the Bahrain International Circuit in Sakia, IMJWF1 and we're going to kick things off today with the sprint race for IFMC GP2, 15 laps of action here and uh, fuel consumption is a thing around here especially if you've seen the last two seasons of uh, this uh, championship especially the first time we went round here in season 2. Uh, if you didn't see what happened yesterday in the feature race it was an okay race not the best but uh, in the end it was Lando Norris who went on to grab the victory with Felix Rosenquist second and George Russell in third position and uh, of course the fastest lap going to Lando Norris in the end which is why he takes an early lead in the drivers championship but uh, as you can see the top eight are now reverse and it sees Lando's teammate Norman Nato taking the pole position today and uh, Mitch Evans, la who finished third last season in the GP2 Championship, looking to try and stop him today in the Vortex Racing Car. So before we start then, guys, let's mute this, turn this up a little, and let's have a look at the grid for today's sprint race here in Sakia. Here we go then. So on pole position, it's Norman Natto with Mitch Evans in second. Nick De Vries lines up in third with Lance Stroll in fourth position. Pierre Gasly will start in fifth. Alongside him is George Russell in sixth. Felix Rosenquist starts in seventh with yesterday's winner Lando Norris starting in eighth. Luca Giotto is in ninth. Alongside him, teammate Sergei Sorokin who starts tenth. Sacha Fenestras is in eleventh. Louis Razia starts up in twelfth. Sean Galio is thirteenth with Nobuhara Masashita in fourteenth position. Dan Tickton will start in 15th, Joel Eriksson is in 16th, Santiago Urishia starts 17th, alongside him Lucas Giora is in 18th, Yui Vips will start 19th with Alex Lynn in 20th position and on the back row of the grid due to their retirement it's Jolien Palmer in 21st and Mick Schumacher in 22nd position and that is the grid for the sprint race here in Sakia. So that was the grid for the sprint race, 15 laps of action, and the weather, of course, being bright and sunny, so leave your predictions, but without further ado, let's get to the sprint race. So, as we uh, hopefully get the signal, there you go then. So here we are then on the grid, it's Nato on the right, it's Evans on the left, who's going to get the lead into turn one as we wait for the five red lights to go off to signify the start of the race here in Bahrain. Two lights are on, three lights are on. Four lights are on. Five lights are on. And we are going for the sprint race here in Bahrain. It seems to be a good start from Evans. He's got the jump on Nato. Evans takes the lead as he heads down towards turn one. And a good start from Defries who's up to second. Fantastic start from both of them. He's been mugged at the start. And Rosenquist clips his teammate. Rosenquist clips the back of his teammate. Luckily, Russell... Luckily, Rosenquist doesn't gain time from that, but Russell has constantly a chance of trying to grab second from De Vries, so they head through these corners now then. Russell all over the backside of Nick De Vries now then, as they go through the first couple of corners, as I really got through okay. It appears like it. At this stage, yeah, everybody's got through okay despite that little contact there. Russell down the inside of Nick De Vries, and Russell grabs second from De Vries there. Rosenquist trying to follow through if he can behind, but unable to do so. De Vries holding him back. For the time being, a good start from both EMRs who gained up to 7th and 8th. Respectively, they tried to challenge points after what had been a disappointing weekend so far. But it's Evans with quite a commanding lead. And in front of the moment with George Russell in second. Evans then going through the right hander now then as he leads uh, here on this 15 lap sprint race. He's head down the hill towards the Grand Prix loop of the track. And it's DeFries who's currently in a Red Bull Academy sandwich at this stage. Trying to still keep the pressure on George Russell in front. Everybody making their way through the chicane now. Then Stroll now all over the backside of Rosenquist. If you look at it, DeFries in a Red Bull Academy sandwich. Rosenquist in a GRM sandwich. So it's two sandwiches going at one, really. As uh, meantime, now then Fenestras having to fend off and no behind Masashita. Both of them have got quite a good start from their grid positions as well. As uh, not a good start from Gasly. He's down to 12. He's he's clearly not had the best of starts. He seems to have got mugged at the start after after being in fifth place at the start. Norris has also had a terrible start. He's down to 15th place. And uh, possibly they got held up a little bit by the contact between Russell and Rosenquist. As uh, it's been quite a good start from Lin, who's up to 16th as well. And uh, meantime, Schumacher getting up the field. Phipps now bringing up the rear of the field as Evans now then approaches the second to last corner now then. Russell trying to gain onto him, especially can't remember. Fuel is a talking point in this race, let's not forget. 
And uh, it'll be very interesting to see how much fuel these guys will have by the end of the race and whether they'll have enough to get to the end. They don't want an Ollie Rowland moment from Season 2 as uh, Evans comes around the final corner. And then, so at the end of lap 1 of 15 then, here at Sakir, it's Evans who leads, Russell in 2nd, De Vries 3rd, Rosenquist 4th, Stroll in 5th, Nato running at the top 6, which is the final points place. And Nato, after getting on pole, down to 6th place. Evans does the fastest lap at 2 minute 9. Uh, with him there then as they head down towards the first corner Stroll trying to get up close to Rosenquist to free so he's in time to Russell in front of him at the moment nobody really making uh, that many overtakes at this stage of the race everybody just kind of grouped together the way as Gasly takes 11 from Lucas Yards so up to P11 goes Pierre Gasly and uh, Yo, uh, who's had quite a good start as well to get up into 12th after being in 18th on the grid uh, now possibly finding himself under pressure from Louis Razia as meantime Razia is actually feeling the pressure from Joel Eriksson who's looking to the inside of Razia down towards the right hand has Eriksson got the place and he has Eriksson up to 13th place there Lynn getting to places up to 15th at the moment or in fact he stays there I think or in fact I think both of them have actually got ticked him and Lynn's up to 15th so uh Either way, I'm uh, a little bit muddled up there. But as you can see, look at Russell. He's starting to close up now a bit to Mitch Evans in front. Russell wanting the victory if he can as he goes down the hill now then. Rosenquist still piling the pressure on the freeze as he stroll on him at the moment. As the meantime, the EMRs piling the pressure on uh, on Nato if they can. As it looked like the Sorokin and the Squirmish of Oversteer going through into those corners there. As you hear the tyres screeching from his car there as they head out of the hairpin now then. Heading up towards the double left-hander now then on the track. Evans now then heading down the uh, the support pit straight now then towards the left-hander. Russell's broke away as mentioned from De Vries, who's having to fend off from a train of cars it must be said. And uh, although they are kind of separating themselves at the moment. There's De Vries now then flicking the car through the left-hander as um, having to fend off from Rosenquist. Rosenquist in fact looked like he got better traction compared to De Vries coming out of that left hand as he tries to pile the pressure on the young Dutchman and uh, Rosenquist now then through the second to last corner he will go heading down the back straight now then towards the final corner and uh, Rosenquist not giving up at this stage as Evans will start lap three of the race here in Sakia as he's trying to hope that Russell doesn't get too close to him by the end of the race as they head down the pit straight as Evans sets the fastest lap at 2 minute 8.176, but then Russell takes that away at 2 minute 7.982. What is the gap between the top two as they head down towards turn one on the track? And you just saw Russell's name pop into view there. It's a two second gap between the pair of them at this stage. So two seconds between Evans and Russell. So that's that at the moment as uh, Rosenquist still not close enough to make a pass on De Vries at the moment. De Vries keeping him honest at this stage and the two EMR still not able to get a grasp of Nato at the moment clearly they're struggling to overtake although it's saying that Nato going quite defensive towards that left hander and it right hander sorry and it's brought Giotto just that tad bit closer now to the back of Nato as they head up towards the uh, the chicane now they're on the track and Giotto trying his utmost best to get into the points if he can heading through towards the left hander now right hander sorry and uh, using as little curve as possible through into these corners now then as Giotto flicks the car in now then as uh, now they head down through the left hander up towards the hairpin and uh, using a lot of curb there to his advantage Giotto now then around he goes through the left hander and now we go up towards the hairpin on the track and uh, the Italian still stuck behind the Frenchman uh, at this stage of the race, Evans still keeping a gap consistent between himself and Russell, but it's very clear out the two of them, judging from the fastest laps, Russell has the pace compared to Evans at this stage of the race. As they now head down the support pit straight towards the uh, the left hander, Russell doing all he can to gain onto the back of Evans and possibly take the lead off the Kiwi. As they now go flat through the right hander, now then up towards. The second to last corner as they head down the back straight now then towards turns number two and uh, it must be said Russell and Rosenquist got a good start from their grid position sixth and seventh so they did a good job despite the contact the pair of them made into turn one rule one never hit your teammate as uh, so now they head down towards the final corner Rosenquist piling the pressure on as best as he can on Nick as he heads 
down the pit straight now then and still not able to get close enough for an attack Evans setting the fastest lap of the race so starting to respond a bit perhaps to uh, to, to to Russell's pace at this stage of the race as uh, Giotto still part of the pressure on Nato Nato going very defensive in towards turn one there but realizing Giotto isn't close enough to make a pass at this stage now then Fenestras even getting up to this battle as well as they now go through these next section of corners and now up towards turn four we will go Giotto still not close enough again Nato chooses to go defensive still feels the pressure from the young Italian and Giotto getting up close out of the exit of the corner now then Giotto trying to get into the slipstream as best he can on the Frenchman at this stage as they now approach the left-hander now then through they go through the double right-hander and uh, Giotto trying to find a way through on Nato this time around now then it is for the final points place remember only the top six get points in the sprint race unlike yesterday where the top eight got points only the top six today will get points in the sprint race as they now rejoin the Grand Prix section of the course as uh, me time now stroll breaking away now from Nato and it looks like the pet both De Vries and Rosenquist are breaking away from Lance Stroll Stroll looking starting to look quite lonely in fifth place at this stage of the race as uh, now they negotiate through towards the double left-hander down the straight now then towards the uh, towards the back straight now then towards um, the first corner of the support pitch straight again Rosenquist not close enough to the back of the freeze this time around trying everything he can to get onto him in this race remember all the cars are the same it's just down to the pure talent uh, of these cars uh, to see if they can get in order to try and impress the top class teams in the future as they now head out of the second to last corner Rosenquist trying to get within the slipstream of the freeze if he can as they will now both approach the uh, the final corner on the track in towards the final corner then goes Felix Rosenquist using as much curve as possible and again Rosenquist not close enough in fact De Vries looks like he's starting to get away a little bit now from the Swede as uh, again Giotto falling back again from Nato Nato just able to keep a consistent gap at the moment Russell setting another fastest lap at 2 minutes 7.887 it said there so Russell currently holding on to the bonus point for the fastest lap of the race as they head down towards uh, turn one and uh, Sorotkin feeling some pressure from behind from Fenestras and a recovering Gasly who unseen by the cameras has got up into 10th place at the moment so up to P10 goes the Frenchman as uh, he goes out of turn number three there and trying to get onto the back of this battle if he can again Nato choosing to go defensive and it brings um, it brings Giotto just that tad bit closer and you can definitely tell now Rosenquist is starting now to drop back from the young Dutchman and Rosenquist at the moment just hasn't got a response to Nick De Vries at this stage as he flicks the car through the right hander now then he'll head down the hill towards the uh, the left hander now then flicking the car in and uh, Rosenquist doing whatever he can to uh, to get De Vries in front of him now then as they now approach the hairpin and uh, as you can see coming out of that corner now then they'll go up towards the double left under and it looks like Russ it looks like Evans is starting to respond to Russell's pace a bit because the gap's still looking similarly uh, looking quite similar to each other because it's not like Russell has has pretty much um, reeled him in at this stage what lap are we on one lap five now of the race out of 15 uh, here and uh, look like Russell they got a little bit of a twitch of oversteer going out of that corner and uh, luckily for him able to correct that uh, that tad bit of oversteer in towards the uh, the right hander we will go Russell trying his best to overhaul um, Evans in front as he now tries everything within his power to get the leader as they approach the final corner as they head down the uh, the pitch straight now then and they'll head towards turn one on the track and um, Mitch Evans still leading the race at this stage in the Vortex racing car what is the gap between the pair of them we have 10 laps to go here in um, here in Sakia as they head down towards turn one let's see the gap between the pair of them 2.5 seconds is the gap between Evans and Russell in this race and uh, De Vries continuing 
to pull away at the moment. Sorotkin going very defensive. Fenestras piling the pressure on the Russian at this stage as they head down through the first few corners on the track. And Fenestras can see an opportunity and maybe even Gasly as well. The two Frenchmen harrying the Russian at this stage. And Giotto not close enough that time around. Looks like Nato's pulled a gap now to the Italian as they now head through the left hand and now then up towards the uh, chicane and through they go then around the uh, chicane we will go and Giotto doing whatever in his power to to reel in sixth place man uh, Norman Natto at this rate as they head through the right hander and now down the hill we go then towards uh, back onto the Grand Prix track now then using a lot of curve as possible and uh, so that's that's that at the moment and uh, so meantime then after six laps of action here is uh, how the leaderboard currently looks uh, at this stage of the race it's Evans who leads Russell second De Vries in third Rosenquist in fourth Stroll in fifth Nato sixth Giotto seventh Sorotkin eighth Fenestras ninth Gasly in tenth Euro eleventh Ericsson twelfth Razia thirteenth Norris fourteenth Lynn fifteenth Galio sixteenth Masashita seventeenth Tiktam eighteenth Palmer nineteenth Vips in twentieth Yurichia twenty first and Schumacher in twenty second position at this stage of the race. Schumacher looking like he's lost a couple of places at the moment, it appears. Uh, must have got uh, mugged down the straight by both Vips and, uh, in fact, Vips may have got Eurisha a little early on. Looks like Eurisha is starting to fall down the field at the rate. But at the moment, all 22 cars still running in this race. We've not had a single retirement yet in the race. Don't jinx myself, but um, that's that at the present moment as they head down the, uh, the straight. And uh, Evans will now Across the line to start lap seven of 15 here and he sets another fastest lap and then Russell takes it away with a two minute 7.530 Russell takes back the bonus points it looks like Evans and Russell out in front trading fastest laps at the moment in this race and uh, at the moment we're 13 minutes away from the half past one mark we are uh, 43 minutes away from the Bahrain Grand Prix uh, which sees Lewis Hamilton on pole ahead of Esteban Ocon and Fernando Alonso and they will get set for 49 laps of action here in Sakia, and it'll be interesting to see who will be doing the late stops during that Grand Prix as Evans flicks the car through into the chicane and still comfortably leading the race at this stage of the race at the moment as um, still keeping the gap consistent between himself and Russell at this stage, it appears that the top six are starting to separate because Natal's now starting to break away from Giotto. And unseen by the camera, Sorotkin has been overtaken by Fenestras and Gasly. So down to 10th place goes Sergei Sorotkin as Gasly and Fenestras overtaken for 8th and 9th respectively. The, the two Frenchmen threw up into 9th and 8th and 9th respectively. Fenestras now trying to chase down Luca Giotto for P7 if he can in the Lopez Racing Development car. And uh, both Lopez Racing Development cars having a decent race, as we said. Ericsson still holding off Razia for P12 at the moment as he tries to hunt down Lucas Jura for P11. He's right now onto the back of Sergei Sorotkin. Sorotkin still sticking with Pierre Gasly at this rate. So Sorotkin still not giving up on the Academy driver as of yet, yet as they go through the double left-hander now then. Out of the corner they will go, heading down. The uh, the support pitch straight there then. Meantime, Evans still in the race quite comfortably out in front in the Vortex racing car. As uh, they now head down the back straight towards the, uh, the final corner. And uh, so into the final corner and they'll go onto the pitch straight. And uh, Evans now starting lap 8 to 15 here in Sakia. Uh, we'll check the fuel loads around about lap 10 to see how much everybody will have and make some form of estimate, which uh, sometimes I don't have a clue on because yesterday I struggled. I, I didn't have a clue in terms of the fuel loads, but luckily everybody made it to the end uh, with that fuel load ones that were still remaining, of course, barring the ones that um, that retired due to uh, mechanical problems. And uh, so that was that, really. Meantime, Sorotkin now starting to lose time to Gasly. Yura not close enough to him at this stage. And Razia is up to 12. He passes Ericsson. So up to P12 goes Louis Razia. And Ericsson now finding himself under pressure from a recovering Lando Norris, who had a terrible start after starting in 8th place on the grid. He now finds himself down in 14th place as uh, now Norris gets out 
of the uh, the right hander now and then up towards turn four on the track before flicking it left towards the endurance layout of the course and uh, out of the corner we will go then up towards the chicane one lap eight as mentioned of uh, 15 here at Sakia and uh, at the moment it is Evans who still leads the race at this stage in the Vortex racing car as he just goes out of the hairpin now then to approach the double left-hander and uh, in towards that left-hander we will go and uh, using a lot of curb as possible as he heads down the back straight towards the uh, the left-hander now then towards turn one of this support pit straight and uh, trying to go as best as he can at this stage of the race as he will go up towards the flat out right hander and up towards the second to last corner we will go Evans still leading the race quite comfortably Russell second, De Vries third, Rosenquist fourth, Stroll in fifth and Nato running out the top six at this stage and Nato continuing to drop back from Stroll but getting away from Luca Giotto in the EMR and uh, trying to see if he can try and gain back on to um, try and see if he can gain back on to Lance Stroll uh, in front of him at the moment as Nato approaches the uh, the final corner and uh, dipping down a few gears as he heads down the straight now then and uh, now they're all on lap nine of the race six laps remaining then here in Sakia lap nine of fifteen we are on Evans still in the race the race sort of calming down it's only down at the uh, the midfield where most of the battles are happening especially Palmer who's attacking Tipton for P18 uh, at this stage Schumacher trying to attack Vips for 21st uh, at the moment at least Masashita and Goliath unable to capitalize from 13th and 14th they're now down to 16th and 17th respectively behind uh, Alex Lynn Nata sorry Norris not Nato Nato's up in sixth he's all over now the backside of Joel Eriksson for P13 now and uh, trying to see if he can try and gain uh, 13th place from the Swede now then and uh, these two I think were rivals I think in Formula 3 and uh, but so far Norris after the the feature race has so far had a better start compared to what Ericsson has had as they now approach the uh, chicane Norris really trying to get uh, into the slit scene of Joel Eriksson if he can as they now go out of that right hander up towards the next section of corners then we will go as they now head down the hill and they'll approach the left hander now then and using a lot of curb as possible he's getting closer to his back end there and seems to be going a lot quicker through the corners than what Eriksson is in front of this stage as they now approach the hairpin nice trying to attack him as much as possible and see if he can try and grab 13th from the Swedish driver now then as they will now approach the uh, the double left hander on the track up towards the uh, the left hander we will go heading down the uh, the support pit straight as they will now go up towards the turn one of the support pit straight now then and now up towards that left hander we will go and you can see they're nice breaking a lot later than what Ericsson was doing going into that corner and sorry it's seven laps to go in this race not six we're on lap nine or 15 you include lap nine as well into that equation uh, but it will soon be six laps to go and just now in fact because Evans has set the fastest lap at two minutes 7.336 we're now on lap 10 of 15 uh, six laps remaining then here in Saki and look at how much slipstream not it's got there he goes to the inside of Joel Erickson there's just enough of a gap down the inside will he try and go for it no nope. Ericsson just able to hang it around the outside and keep hold of 13th for the moment. And nice now as a result falls back. Lynn unable to capitalise from that and stays in uh, 15th place at this stage behind his fellow compatriot. As uh, meantime, Fenestra is not getting as close to Giotto as much as he would want to at the moment in this race. Evans still leading the way from Russell in second place. As Evans goes out the corner, I want to check the fuel loads at this stage of the race and um hmm it'd be very interesting to see in fact i'm not 100 percent sure to be honest with you 6.2 liters i think he could get to the end with that amount of fuel but we'll wait and see on that and um so yeah we'll wait and see on that as uh, evans now then approaches the uh, the right hander in the vortex racing car 
And uh, Evans now then through towards the double left hander he will go. And out the corner then heading down the uh, the back straight towards the uh, the left hander. And uh, so up towards that left hander will go Mitch Evans. And uh, so now he will go flat out through the right hander. And now up towards the second to last corner he will go. As he heads down the back straight now then towards the final corner. As Vips is out of the race, Yuri Vips is out. What's happened to Yuri Vips? And there he is. It's a water leap for the Estonian. Yuri Vips is out of the race and we're down to 21 runners. And, uh, well, that's the end of Vips's race. A disappointing weekend for the Estonian. He'll be looking to bounce back uh, next time at, in a fortnight's time for GP2 in Barcelona. So, um, that's that. As Evans now then goes up towards the final convert. Confirmation that... Uh, that Yui Vips is out of the race on lap 10 of 15 here at Sakia. As uh, so they now head down the back straight, the top two, as you can see, got a bit of a gap forming in front of Nick De Vries, who's currently uh, in third place, as they'll now approach the first corner on the track. Through towards turn one, then we go. And then through turn two, and then around turn three, we will go. And we're on lap 11 of 15 now then. Five laps to go for the GP2 guys. As uh, Evans will now go through the right hand. And now Joel Eriksson is out. Joel Eriksson out of the race. What's happened to Eriksson? And uh, there he is. He's down there. And there's a crash between Eriksson and uh, Norris, it appears. Both of them have crashed out. And uh, I'll be interested to see what on earth happened there at the final corner. Let's see if we're catching that. And oh, dearie me, look like Ericsson there just wasn't expecting Norris coming. I wouldn't blame Norris on that, mainly because he was he already had the line going into the corner. We'll have a look from Norris's uh, perspective. And yeah, he's he's clearly got the place there. It just looked like that Ericsson did not want to give up. That will be investigated for sure. But that's definitely cost uh, Norris's race for the That is so lucky there for. Um, for, I think that was uh, that was Tictum there, so close to clipping uh, Norris there at the present moment, and uh, Palmer there having a go down at the yellow flag area there, and uh, he'll have to let that place go, which he does, thankfully. But uh, well, that would have been that. Otherwise, he would have been investigated if that were the case. And uh, so that's that then, really. But Sasha Fenestras. Sorry, Joel Eriksson, sorry, the wrong LRD is out of the race. Norris drops down to 20th as a result of uh, the crash there. But that will be investigated uh, after the, the race, of course. And, uh, well, that's pretty much that then, really. As uh, now Evans goes down towards the left-hander. There was Vips's car from earlier on, pulled off. So now we're down to 20 runners here, in, um, here at Sakia. As uh, now Evans approaches the hairpin. To still lead the race out in front at this stage. I believe we are on lap 11. Yes, we are. Five laps to go uh, for Mitch Evans. As he will now approach the double left-hander. Breaking down a few gears. And uh, so, that's that then really. Gasly now trying to hunt down Fenestras if he can for P8. Trying to hunt down his fellow compatriot at this stage of the race. As he heads out of the hairpin. And he will now approach... The double left-hander on the track. Gasly now then breaking as hard as he can through towards the left-hander using as much curb as possible. Heading down the back straight now then towards the left-hander. And uh, so now towards the left-hander will go Pierre Gasly. And uh, so that's that then really. Gasly now then up towards the flat-out right-hander. And so you'll now go up towards... The second last corner, trying to break as late as possible compared to his compatriot, Sasha Fenestras. As now heading down towards the final corner, Evans setting another fastest lap of 2 minutes 7.237. So, so far, Evans holding on to the bonus point for the fastest lap of the race. Four laps remaining for the Kiwi. He's now on lap 12 of 15 here in Sakia. That's uh, going out the final corner. There goes Pierre Gasly as he heads down the, uh, the back straight now, then towards turn one. And, uh, so now, he, as you can see, he's not close enough that turn around to the back of Fenestraz's car. 
And a uh, bit of a lock up there from Pierre Gasly, showing he's pushing as hard as he can around this track. So a lock up from the Frenchman as he now just goes out of turn three. And now heading up towards the right hander. And Pierre will be hoping to try and uh, get onto the back of, uh, of Sasha Fenestras as, as soon as possible. And he goes through the, uh, the left hander now, then. And uh, Gasly, through he goes, round the left, and then the right he will go, trying everything he can to get up close to Sasha if he can. And now up towards these next section of corners. And uh, trying to hunt down at the moment, and so far still not close enough to the back of him at the moment. Sorotkin is now broke away from Yora, who may soon have to fend off from Louis Razier, who's starting to hunt him down for P11 in the Willows Grand Prix car. Like with uh, with uh, several teams at the moment, Willows Grand Prix not getting off to the best of starts whatsoever, going away from this weekend, going away pointless, and it looks to be the same for defending champions East Midlands Racing at the moment. So uh, not a good start for either one of the Willows-owned uh, teams there. But uh, that's that really, as uh, Euro now then goes up towards the left-hander on the track. Uh, so Razia still tries to power the pressure on as best as he can now then as Evans now approaches the uh, the final corner onto the track through the final corner and onto the pit street we will go as uh, we will then have three laps to go here in Sakia so down the pit street we will go Three laps remaining for the key weight. Lap 13 to 15 now then. As Russell now sets the fastest lap at 2 minutes 7.167 here in uh, Sakia. As uh, now heading out of turn 1 then goes Mitch Evans. Through turn 2 and then around turn 3 we will go. And uh, so that's that for them really. As uh, meantime, uh, as you can see everybody... Taking their time a little bit. Norris has mentioned Danny and Lass as a result of that contact with uh, Joel Erickson. Of course, that will be investigated between the pair of them um, for that crash. And um, now going in towards the uh, the right-hander. As they'll now go up towards the next corner on the track. And uh, so now heading down the hill towards the, uh, the left-hander. And uh, Evans now then, three laps remaining for the Kiwi, the man that came so close to winning the championship last season but missed out like he did back in season one. That's two championships now he's missed out on and uh, the Kiwi possibly getting a bit desperate now to try and hunt down for a championship as he now goes through the double left-hander now then. Out of the corner he will go using as much curb as possible and uh, you can definitely tell much of a gap Russell has compared to uh, Nick De Vries at the moment and uh, so far then the top six looks like this Evans leads Russell in second De Vries third Rosenquist fourth with Stroll in fifth and Nato running out the top six I think if it stays like this if I'm correct then I believe that uh, um, let me work it out in my head um, I think at the moment if it stays like this I believe Rosenquist will lead the championship. I might be wrong, but I think that will be the case. I think Rosenquist will lead it, but not by much. I think it will be two points ahead of Norris and uh, and Russell, who will be tied on points by the end of it. But having said that, in fact, it might just be Russell, in fact, because Russell currently holds on to the bonus point for the fastest lap of the race. So uh, that could be something uh, to, to bear in mind as a result. And uh, now on to the penultimate lap of the race now. Then I'm just looking at the fuel loads at this stage of the race. And I'll have to work it out when we get onto the final lap. At this rate, I could be wrong, but I think everybody, I think Evans and Ro I think Evans will have enough fuel to get to the end of the race. So I don't think we'll be having another Roland moment from season two. So um, that's that really. I could be wrong. But I'll need to double check what the fuel looks like by the end of the race. But I believe Evans has enough to get to the end of the race. But we will see. As he now approaches the uh, the these few corners now then. As he now he goes through the right hander using as much curb as possible now then. As he heads down the hill to rejoin the Grand Prix loop of the track. And uh, Evans now then getting the car flicked in. And uh, now he goes through the, the right and left hander. 
uh, on the track. And the meantime now, looks like Gazi is now starting to fall back now from Sacha Fenestraz. I think Fenestraz has done enough to hold off 8th place from his fellow compatriots. So Fenestraz looking good to grab 8th place in this race as they head down the hill to rejoin the Grand Prix loop of the track. And uh, so that's that for them really. And uh, meantime, uh, Norris bringing up the rear of the field of course after that contact with Joel Eriksson. Again, just as a reminder, that incident will be investigated after the race um, due to that crash that happened down at the last corner uh, a few laps ago. And uh, obviously it has cost uh, Norris any chance of trying to get within the top 10. Probably not points. I think points were probably without, uh, just not within reach of uh, Norris. But uh, I think a top 10 finish could have been after what had been a, a poor start to the race um, for the early championship leader. But meantime, here's Evans as He comes around the final corner and I have to question that fuel load look because he's only got 1.1 liters of fuel I will try and keep an eye on it as best as I can but here but for the meantime Evans starts his final lap here in Sakia whether he has enough I don't know Russell hoping he possibly runs out of fuel by the end of it then Evans setting the fastest lap of the race but does he have enough fuel to get to the end of the race now then that is the question and uh, so now we head up towards the right-hander. It could be tight, just like with Sorokin last season. But we will wait and see now then. As he heads up towards the uh, the next few corners on the track now then. And uh, now through towards the double right-hander we will go. As he will now approach these next section of corners. It is very interesting to see whether Evans has enough fuel to get to the end of the race. And I'm guessing with people who are currently outside the points, they're hoping he can run out of fuel. So, um, and in fact, with a couple of others out in front at this stage at the moment, as they now approach these next section of corners now then. And that is very tight for Mitch Evans. 0.5 litres, he's only got left in the back of that wagon. We will keep an eye on it as best as we can but that is going to be very very tight for Evans to get to the end 0.4 liters he is down to at the present moment 0.3 is now down to that is ugh, I don't know if he's going to get to the end with that amount of fuel that is the question I do not know Evans if he will have enough fuel to actually get to the end and win this race 0.2 it is now down to Oh, dearie, dearie me. It might have another rolling moment if he's not careful. He approaches the second to last corner. 0.1. Oh, have Vortex fueled him up enough to get to the end? That is the question. This long straight one up. It's down to 0.0. Oh, can he get to the end? Coming out of the final corner. Has it gone yet? Oh, he's still running. I think he'll just have enough. It's gone. But can he get across the line? This is going to be close. Russell is there. It's going to be close. But Evans has just done it. Evans wins here in the sprint race. What a finale that was. Evans wins here in the sprint race. Russell finishes second. De Vries finishes in third. Only just Vortex had enough to crawl across the line. Rosenquist fourth. Stroll will finish in fifth. Nato rounds out the points in sixth place. Giotto will cross the line in seventh. Fenestras is going to cross the line in eighth. Gasly is going to cross the line in ninth. It is going to be Sorotkin who finishes in 10th, Jura will finish in 11th, Razia will cross the line in 12th, Lin is going to be 13th in the end, Galil is 14th, Masushita crosses the line in 15th position, Palmer is 16th in the end, Tictum will be 17th, Eurasia 18th in the end, Schumacher will cross the line in 19th, and Norris is going to cross the line in in 20th place but after all of that he's not available now a few people have pulled off but it is Mitch Evans who wins it only just by the hair due to the amount of fuel he had left in the race now then but there you have it then guys after all of that here is the result of the race here in Sakia it is Mitch Evans who won the race with George Russell in second Nick DeFries Finishes in third with Felix Rosenquist fourth, Lance Stroll fifth, Norman Nato sixth, Luca Giotto seventh with Sasha Fenestras eighth, Pierre Gasly is in ninth with Sergei Sorotkin tenth, Luca Giora eleventh, Louis Razia twelfth, and it is Alex Lynn thirteenth with Sean Galile in fourteenth position. 
And if we scroll down the rest of the field, it is Nobuhara Masashita in 15th, Jolene Palmer 16th, Dan Tictum 17th, Santiago Irishia 18th, Mick Schumacher 19th, Lando Norris, the final finisher in 20th. There are two retirements with Joel Erickson and Yuri Vips in the end there then. So let's see who set the fastest lap of the race, who's going away with the uh, the bonus point. And it was George Russell with a 2 minute 6.950. So he takes away the bonus point for the fastest lap of the race. He was one tenth quicker than Lando Norris in the end there then. But there you have it then, guys. That has been it from the sprint race and for GP2 this weekend. They'll be back in a fortnight's time. Not next week, but in a fortnight's time in Barcelona. Though we're not going to South Africa next week. But there you have it then, guys. That's it for GP2. But stick around now, guys, because coming up next is the 49-lap Bahrain Grand Prix, which sees Lewis Hamilton on pole position ahead of Esteban Ocon and Fernando Alonso. So... Look out for that. The podium for GP2 is coming your way just after this. But until then, guys, that has been it. I hope you enjoyed it. So thank you very much for watching. I'm Jay Do F1, and I'll see you guys in just a little bit. Enjoy the GP2 podium.